From the Watergate Building in Washington, this is Hotline TV. Now, here's Hotline Editor, John Mercurio. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hotline TV. I'm John Mercurio. And I'm Amy Walter. While the coming Iowa straw poll provides some risk for Republican candidates, as we all know, poor showings may result in the end of the road for some candidates. It also may be an opportunity for some underdogs to break out. John, who's going to get something from the straw poll fairy? Well, the straw poll fairy. Yeah. Nice. Well Won't done. that be good? You know, look, four, there were four Republican candidates after the 2000 Ames straw poll who dropped out. So the Ames straw poll does have a history of having an impact on the Republican primary. Separating the wheat from the chafe, as that it were. That is exactly what I was about to say. Oh, it's I'm like, so sorry. It's so good. It's so, so in scary. Sync. scary. And scary at the same or time. Or Backstreet Boys. I don't know. Backstreet Boys, very much so. Um, but uh, look, I, I, I think obviously there's going to be a different situation this year. Giuliani not competing. Uh, McCain obviously not really able to compete at this point. McCain at this point, I'm sorry, Romney at this point, uh, sort of dialing back expectations mm -hmm. for his own mm -hmm. uh, showing. Because, you know, honestly, I think what he's seeing and what the, what the Romney campaign is seeing on the ground in Iowa is that he has not sealed the deal with conservatives. With Fred Thompson sort of uh, out there in the wings, he's not going to compete either in the, in the primary. In the Eventually we'll get to who's actually competing. But, you know, the top front runner, the top tier, uh, I think Romney's uh, sort of unable to seal the deal because conservatives are saying, wait, I want to see what Fred Thompson can offer me. I'm not going to I'm not going to get in yet. So that's going to really, I think, throw a wrench uh, in his ability to compete. And look, if you're Sam Brownback, as he's been doing, which is you might as well start throwing some punches, man. you got right. nothing to lose. That's exactly right. And if he is supposed to be the conservative choice, right, trying to break away from Huckabee and from Tancredo and some of the others who want to get that label. Tommy Thompson. Tommy Thompson, for example. Still in the campaign. Still, He's still St running. He is still here. All right. So we haven't seen anything about that. All right. So if you're Sam Brownback, you say, look, I'm the guy who has the most consistent record. I'm the, hey, I'm from actually next door. Right. Right. So right. I get these issues on so many different levels. I should be the one that people are rallying around. And, and, That's and the let's one. just, now, and if you're Fred Thompson, how happy are you right now? Sam Brownback is doing all the work for you. Right, right, exactly. That's the thing, though. I think t Brownback is, has suffered so far during this campaign for um, relative lack of success in fundraising, much like Huckabee. Neither of them actually seem to be able to, to, to come up with the money that they would need to actually be viable candidates. Look, if either of these two guys, Brownback or Huckabee, both of them sort of legitimate uh, you know, national candidates, were able to commit the discipline to the campaign to raise the money that they need they would be viable on well, a national level, on, 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 in the top tier. Of course, that hasn't happened uh, for, for, for various reasons. And that, I think, holds Brown back back. But like you said, he should definitely be the, the, the top, he should be the top ticket getter uh, in Ames, I well, think. And if he doesn't, Then there's going to be a question. A the other problem. funny thing about Huckabee is, you know, he keeps getting all these great props from national and local reporters about his showings in the debates and how he's sort of refreshing. And it's, so he's getting all sorts of credit for being an interesting and, and qu you know, quippy uh, uh, candidate, but nobody's saying, oh, NPS, he's also the best conservative candidate, right? I think he'd probably trade some of those right. compliments in, or, he's, or the coverage he gets is, is getting in a fight with Michael Moore about who's the fattest right. or who's the slobbiest or whatever the Why debate aren't was. Why are more people making more Al Sharpton comparisons between Mike Huckabee and Al Sharpton. Look, That's there are true. obvious comparisons. Um, well, there are obvious differences, obvious but there are obvious comparisons. They both lost a lot of weight. They both lost a lot of weight. Good point. They both impress people during the debates, right. and then don't really run campaigns outside of the of national the television uh, yep. performances that they yep. give, but are still sort of raising their national profiles. But the weight loss is really the it's biggest really, thing. It's really, really, really key. All right, we're out of time for today. Thank you very much for joining us on Hotline TV. Thank you very much.